when you thought of inviting the solicitor general, did you invite the solicitor general? I mean, a you chance. can say that. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I need protection. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman. I've not seen anybody come no, to no, 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 Mr. Chairman. All when we are debating, when you are so debating, you don't, you don't have. The controversy over the 40 billion shillings compensation to Dura Cement today had a new twist when a former commissioner in the Energy and Mineral Resources accused government chief whip and former minister in the sector of not heeding his advice not to cancel Duracell's contract. He was the one who ordered for the cancellation. And the commissioner said that he wrote the letter for compensation and that his heart bled. He knew he was doing something very wrong, but he was being pressed by the minister to cancel. And he also put that they were from orders from above. The commissioners have made it very clear that the instructions were in writing and they were given by the minister. The minister himself is saying probably that he's actually has shown the committee that the president made the instruction. While meeting the president early this month over the compensation, the MPs were told a key file containing details of the government official who advised the government to compensate Dura Cement was missing. He actually expected the ministry to do certain things to negotiate before they carried out the cancellation, which probably was not done. Meanwhile, MPs were also told that Hima Cement should have paid off Dura Cement on being awarded the contract and not government. What was given the president that had they established a third factory at Dura, then the factory at Hima would close down. And the information we've got today is contrary. So we begin asking ourselves our questions. Why did these people lead to a cancellation of the license of Dura, which has led to a lot of money being squandered, a lot of big compensation? Dura Cement sued government for breach of contract demanding 103 million US dollars, a figure later revised to 16 million US dollars. The compensation came about as the UPDF training arm, the National Enterprise Corporation, signed a mining agreement with Duracell Limited in 2006. But the president ordered for the cancellation of this contract through the then Minister of Energy, Daudi Migerico. This perhaps now puts the minister in a tricky situation. Maurice Chol, NTV.